to worship here at Portage United Church of Christ. We're starting a new worship series this week called A Way Out of No Way. It is an African-American expression that was forged in the experience of oppression, and it expresses the faith that God and a tenacious people will make a way even when the situation deems otherwise. It means that the only way forward is not by looking to the past, but by trusting in the unforeseen possibilities of God. Those of us who are white cannot fully grasp the experience of oppression and degradation of African Americans. Yet my hope is that over the course of these next several weeks, as we traverse these stories in the Hebrew scriptures, we can gain a new perspective on our own struggles and perhaps also a deeper understanding of the experiences of our siblings. Most importantly though, my hope is that we will gain that true confidence in the unforeseen possibilities of God. The rainbow behind me and the rainbows that you will be seeing throughout this series are a reminder to us of God's covenant faithfulness that has been present with us from the beginning of time. Thank you for being here today and I hope you enjoy our new worship series. I do not know how long it will be, nor what the future holds for me. But this I know, if Jesus leads me, I shall get home someday. If Doppler radar had been around in Noah's day, the severe weather warning would have been intense. God tells Noah how to get ready for the deluge and he sets to work making a way out of no way. We don't really come to know God until we have some reason to trust God. God's rainbow covenant offers us the baseline of trust we need to start a journey and process of self-discovery that will lead us into a life renewed that is large enough for us to inhabit with our full selves. Let us join together in an attitude of prayer. Faithful God, when the waters rage and foam, when the gift of creation becomes a burden, when our fears threaten to overtake us, still the storms and grant us your peace. Fill us with faith, fill us with compassion, fill us with hope. Amen. Amen. Beams of heaven as I go Through this wilderness of woe Guide my heart in peaceful ways Turn my midnights into days When in life's shadows I would grope Faith always finds a star of hope And soon from all life's grief and danger I shall be free someday I do not know how long will be Nor what the future holds for me but this I know, if Jesus leads me, I shall go home someday. Burdens now may crush me down, disappointments all around. Troubles speak in mournful sigh, sorrow through 
a Tuesday pie. There is a world where pleasure reigns, though morning soul shall roam its plains. And to that land of peace and glory, I want to go someday. I do not know how long it will be, nor what the future holds for me. But this I know, if Jesus leads me, I shall get home someday. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I am now establishing my covenant with you, with your descendants, and with every living being with you, with the birds, with the large animals, with all the animals of the earth, leaving the ark with you. I will establish my covenant with you so that never again will all life be cut off by floodwaters. There will never again be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the symbol of the covenant that I am drawing up between me and you and every living thing with you on behalf of every future generation. I have placed my bow in the clouds. It will be the symbol of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will remember the covenant between me and you and every living being among all the creatures. Floodwaters will never again destroy all the creatures. The bow will be in the clouds, and upon seeing it, I will remember the enduring covenant between God and every living being of all the earth's creatures. God said to Noah, this is the symbol of the covenant that I have set up between me and all the creatures on the earth. Rainbows are such a beautiful sight, aren't they? My Facebook feed will be full of pictures of rainbows anytime one shows up after a storm's hit someplace. They are a sign of the calm after a storm, literally and figuratively. They're a sign of hope, a promise that somewhere over the rainbow, just like Judy Garland used to sing. But it wasn't always that way. Back in Noah's day, before the flood, people had a rather different belief about rainbows. They did not evoke those happy and hopeful emotions that we get when we see them. Not surprisingly, the thunder and lightning was believed to come about because the gods were arguing or battling one another. But the rainbow was a sign of the gods' warlike tendencies and their hostilities. It was literally the bow that they would use to shoot those lightning bolts down upon the earth. When the bow appeared up in the sky after a storm, it reminded humans that their lives were dependent on the whims of powerful and not very trustworthy gods. But in our story, after the flood, God hangs up the bow and establishes a covenant. Now, flood stories, like the story in Genesis, are not unique to Genesis, and they were not new. Historians of the ancient Near East can trace them back to 19 centuries before Christ was born, to the earliest civilizations in Mesopotamia, where modern-day Iraq is now. In these flood stories, the gods would get annoyed by the bad behavior of humans or their noisy antics. So they'd send a flood to destroy everything on earth. That's pretty much the same thing that happens in our story of Noah. In fact, you can read in Genesis chapter six that the inclinations of the human hearts were only evil continually. 
So God gets upset. God gets angry and sends this storm to destroy everything, to wash everything clean and begin again. But in our story, unlike all the other gods, after the flood, God hangs up the bow and establishes a covenant. Unfortunately, while rainbows symbolize all this calm and hope and, and evoke such positive feelings for us, I'm not sure we have the same reaction when we think about a covenant with God. We have a tendency to think of covenants like contracts that we sign, contracts that involve penalties and punishments whenever one of the parties fails to fulfill its obligations. And let's be honest here, we can be pretty certain that if we enter into a contract with God, we know which one of us it is that's probably going to fail to live up to their obligations. But fortunately, the contracts that we humans engage in are not the same thing as covenants that God establishes with us. Contracts are when two people or two parties come to agreement about how they're going to interact with each other. We do this in a lot of ways in our everyday lives. A lot of kids and parents enter into contracts over things like allowances and chores. The kids do their chores and in return, they get their allowances. And I'll bet there are a few of you kids out there who if you haven't done your chores, know that you're probably not gonna get your whole allowance. Any of us who's ever had a job also enters into a contract. I show up and do my work and my employer will give me a paycheck. If I don't show up, or if I show up and don't do my job, I'm probably not going to get that paycheck. And we tend to think the same way when it comes to our relationship with God. If I follow all the rules, if I don't tell too many lies, if I don't cheat or steal, if I don't covet my neighbor's spouse or their house or their car, then God won't have any reason to get mad at me or punish me. If I, bad things start happening to me, then I'm going to have to stop a minute and reassess and start taking account of maybe some rules that I broke or something that I didn't do that I should have done because surely God must be trying to teach me a lesson for failing to live up to my responsibilities. But you see, God has not signed a contract with us. God establishes a covenant. God hangs up the bow and establishes a covenant. Covenants do not involve things like jobs and chores, paychecks and allowances. Covenants do not involve things like rules and rewards, obedience and punishment. Covenants are about, are about souls, not things. And covenants are held together with forgiveness and love and mercy, not punishment, destruction, and revenge, a covenant, our mutual embrace, initiated by God, offered to us completely unconditionally. In fact, if you go back and read those verses from Genesis that we heard today, you won't hear any ifs. You won't hear God saying, so long as you do this, or in return for you doing that, God simply says, I am establishing my covenant with you and with every living being on earth. 
God's rainbow covenant is a sign, a promise that there will be a way, even when there seems to be no way. It may not look the way we would like it to look. It may not go the direction we would prefer. And here's the hard part. It may not come to fulfillment in our lifetime. Just check out the history of African Americans or LGBTQ folks, and you will learn a lot about the long journey to a way out of no way. Beloved, we are in a troubling and tumultuous time not just in our own nation, but around the globe. Our whole planet is in turmoil. I don't know what this way out or this way through will look like. I don't know if it's perhaps right in front of me right now. But I do know this. When we enter that mutual embrace that God initiates with us, we covenant with God to create and journey on that way out of no way that is held together by forgiveness and love and mercy. We covenant to create and journey on that way out of no way that is shaped by the unforeseen possibilities of God. Let us journey on it together. Prayer, like covenants, are relationships. Prayer are places where we are invited and called to be our most authentic, vulnerable, and honest selves. Prayer is also the place where God promises to be God's most authentic, honest, and vulnerable self. So, let us, even if it's for a passing moment, find the place today during our prayers where we can be most ourselves and where God can be most God. We'll pause for a moment of silence and we'll pray. And then I'll offer petitions to God. And after each, I invite you to say out loud or in your heart, hear our prayer. So please join with me in an attitude of prayer. For the ways God makes for us when we are being crushed by the world. For the ways God makes for us when our friends and loved ones are hurting. For the ways God makes for us when we see complete strangers calling out to be seen, named, and held. For the ways God makes for us, when compassion seems so far out of reach. For the ways God makes for us, when justice feels like a distant dream. For the ways God makes for us, when we stretch and grow in the ways of Christ's love and healing. Let us continue in prayer with the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We are still taking donations for our weekend food packs program here in Kalamazoo County. It provides healthy meals and snacks for kids over the weekends if they are experiencing food insecurity in their homes. If you would like to contribute to this program or to any of the other ministries here at PUCC, please go to our website and click donate. And now I invite you to join with us in our closing song. My friends, the God who is faithful to you will never fail you. So go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good and render to no one evil for evil. But strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, and honor all persons love and serve God, and rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may God enfold you in a tender and lasting love. May Christ walk beside you in times of struggle. And may the Holy Spirit guide you back to the path whenever you stray, so that you may dwell in covenant faithfulness. Amen. Sing, rejoice, sing.